arranging. How many years have you been arranging these uh, dinners? 16. 16 years. So you have been to restaurants for 16 years. So if anyone here wants to do an event of like 200 people uh, <laughs> at such a no cost, they should see you and just how to do it. I'm leaving in Soho. I'm leaving Soho. I'm going to open up a catering company. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, thank you. Welcome everyone to our meeting this evening. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, our assemblyman. Uh, I guess one of our assemblymen. Uh, well, uh, who will be here next month? Uh, Michael Buer, who used to be our uh, councilman and is now our uh, assemblyman, to give us a brief update. And, uh, were we able to accomplish much this year in uh, Sacramento? Because last year when you were here, Lots. you had a lot to report. So yeah. why not? And I sent him a There'll be another night when I, the main course tonight, I'm just Sheriff Baca's appetizer <laughs> to his entree. So I, I will be rather brief. First of all, I want to say how much I enjoy being here. Um, it's too bad that Jules didn't get to introduce me because then I would get a hug. Yes. Oh, come on, Jules. <laughs> Thank you. Now, now I feel better. Um, but, the, but, but actually, you know, we, we we're kidding around a little bit, but one thing that I do want to say, and when Ellen was talking about Ken Gerson, it really brought it home. I, I was at the memorial service with many of you. And it's at moments like that, tough moments, as well as happy moments like this, when don't you really get reminded about the fact that this is a community, not just a bunch of people assembled in a room, this is a community of people who look out for each other and care about each other. That's a big deal. Politicians come and go, but communities last forever if we do it right. And Sherman Oaks does it right. So I just want to say a couple quick things before I yield the floor to our sheriff. Uh, first, things are happening in Sacramento. As Richard said, last year I had a number of really important bills that got signed by the governor. Uh, it was a marvelous and very successful year in many ways. This year obviously has been a challenging year. But again, I just want to share with you a couple things that are going on. Uh, first of all, I am now the majority policy leader for the State Assembly. And in that role, the key focus I have had this year has been on jobs. We need, obviously, to propel the economy forward. And a key role I have had is particularly to find ways for small businesses, which will drive the recovery, to start to get back on track again. Later we'll talk about the details of that, but there will be proposals that are part of the law this year that will make things easier for small business. Another key area for me has been reforming how state government works. I've had some successes and some things that have yet to succeed when it comes to reform. There will be major changes in how the legislature works next year because of work that a committee I chaired performed. I also wrote a constitutional amendment this year that is not on the ballot yet that would radically change how we budget in California to make things better. Uh, I'm hopeful we'll continue that effort next year. A piece of that is on the November ballot, but a larger array of things is yet to come. One last thing, and then I, I know I have only a brief moment here. Uh, maybe two last things. The penultimate thing is, I was talking to a few of you earlier about health care issues. One piece of legislation I have on the governor's desk is legislation that assures that whether your child is sick or healthy, insurance has to cover that child. We can't anymore have it be the case that sick kids are precluded from getting health insurance in California. It'll save taxpayers money too because currently when private insurers reject them, public taxpayers pay to have those children insured. Last thing, remember a couple years ago I was here urging that we support Measure R, the measure that will infuse $40 billion into transforming how we move here in Los Angeles. And you passed it by more than two-thirds vote. The next step is to make it happen faster. The promise that was made to you 
was that that $40 billion would change the way we transport each other around town in 30 years. We're trying now to move that to 10 years. The mayor has been leading this effort. I had legislation on the governor's desk in Sacramento to help propel that effort forward. Our legislators in Washington need to pick up the ball. The president says he supports it. The transportation secretary says he supports it. But think about what it would mean for Los Angeles to have a project that was supposed to take 30 years, have it be built in 10 instead. That's a way to keep faith with voters. The Studio City Library, when I was a city council member, got built ahead of time because I wanted to find ways to show we could push things forward and make government work. This is another example. The sheriff's turn is next. Oh, Chuck's going to say a word at night. The sheriff's turn is next. I just want to tell well, you. Well, not next, but. Soon enough. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate the privilege of representing you. It really is a real honor for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, okay, so Chuck says, two, I forgot the most important thing. The first important thing I forgot is Stephanie Gillette represents me to you. Oh, Here's yeah. Stephanie. She should wave. She does a great job. The second thing is Chuck says, if you forgot mobile beer billboards, true. Our friend Bob Lumenfield and I co-authored, actually jointly authored legislation on the governor's desk that will authorize cities and counties around California finally to do something to get rid of those mobile billboards. And Chuck is right to say, you know, sometimes we work on huge issues, kids' health care. Sometimes we get rid of light in our communities. Thank you again. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, I'd like to uh, have the deputies for elected officials to come up here and introduce themselves. So, uh, I, I, so they don't just shout. So, uh, any deputy here representing an elected official come up to introduce themselves. While they're coming up, if you were here last uh, month, uh, one of the questions for Congressman Howard Berman was, uh, would you debate your opponents? Uh, in the congressional uh, upcoming election. And he said, yes, he would. Uh, so, next month, 6 o'clock, as a pre-meeting to our regular meeting, starting at 6, next month, there's going to be a debate between the candidates for U.S. Congress representing the Sherman Oaks area, uh, Congressman Howard Berman, the uh, Republican nominee and the Libertarian nominee. So I urge you uh, to come at six o'clock. Uh, Jules will have plenty of food and see a very somewhat historic event because generally there aren't uh, debates among the, uh, uh, especially when there's a sitting congressman, but Howard Berman said he would debate and he will debate here uh, next meeting, third Wednesday in October at six o'clock. I'd like to uh, have our uh, deputies just introduce themselves quickly. Uh, later we'll hear from Pat, but uh, thank you. Pat Davenport for Councilmember Paul Corcorian. I'm uh, Jason Levine. I represent Senator Fran Padley in the Valley. Sean Bayless. Uh, Sean Bayless from Councilmember Paul Grant's office on the Planning and Land Use Deputy. And I want to take up just a quick second to give two quick updates. Uh, first of all, we've got the Ralphs project that's coming up. We have that hearing on the 23rd. So I encourage anyone who wants to come to the uh, City Planning Commission uh, and uh, speak your voice at that uh, at that hearing. I think that would be great. Um, I think both of the things I'm going to touch on are, are important because Silva has had intimate involvement with both of them. Uh, with the Ralphs project, uh, Jay Weitzler and uh, Marshall Long have been intimately involved in that project. And I think we have a much better project because of that. And secondly, we've got the Hillside Ordinance that is tentatively coming online, hopefully at the beginning of uh, October. Uh, we had a community meeting uh, uh, a few months ago. No, that's, that's oh, right. oh, sorry. Uh, a few months ago, we had a meeting with regards to the Hillside Ordinance, and uh, their uh, representative from Soha, uh, Bob Hillside Anderson, uh, showed up. And Bob Anderson uh, wrote a memo to uh, the city council and to everyone that literally became the Bible and the guiding force for the much needed changes that uh, we need to put into that ordinance. And so Bob Anderson went above and beyond, spent